and that seems like a really bad choice. Uh, so it's going to be done when it's done. Uh, but it's currently on Steam Early Access for PC. Uh, you can pick it up now, it's like half off. I don't know if I need to sell it to you guys, but that's okay. Uh, we have four different level themes right now that have a whole bunch of different mechanics, platforms, stuff like that, and all of it is totally different every time you play. Uh, and there are plenty of things to unlock to find the next time you go through. You know, you're always a total shitbox nobody when you start a run, when you die, you get fresh set levels with no power so nothing. Uh, hopefully you find some cool stuff next time. So basically, Mega Man X meets Binding of Isaac meets a little bit of Rogue Legacy. Um, that's a charge shot. You can charge your buster and then fire it. Uh, this is what I'm talking about now because this is screenshot number four, but my actual pitch was only about three words long. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to pay attention to this old UI, uh, which we've completely redone. I guess here, here's what I'll say here. Uh, if you come by, you're going to see how much progress we've made since these screenshots. <laughs> 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 Rather than uh, the game's been in development for about uh, a year and a half now. We're hoping to get it done inside of two years, and now it's done. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pair of bags.
disease is called a vague, and it's kind of like a depression that's setting in over the whole city. And everyone's getting depressed, and everyone's despondent, no one will talk to each other, and so the main character, Alan, is like destroying him inside, so he ends up getting involved in this whole conspiracy of discovering what's going on in the city and the world that he's in. And it's uh, probably like a 10 to 15 hour gameplay time, which is good. It's a little less uh, goofy and funny as Monkey Island, and a little more RPG-esque storyline. It's like a deep and it gets bigger and bigger and expansive, the storyline. Uh, yeah, it's been awesome. We're working on it two years, and March 1st it's coming out. So that's it's coming out. <laughs> we're we're just, um, still doing the music. We're both musicians, so we're recording the music still and uh, mixing it and mastering it. Yeah. And so come play it, come play it, check it out. Thank Cheers, you guys. guys. We got one It's a Burrito Galaxy. Burrito. Thought, we're going to hide all the new characters from here for years. <laughs> See, these, 
They're going to show up there. We're going to have names like Marv and Steve. You're going to think those guys, those guys are badass. But you're going to have to play them in the sequel. If you want to dunk on your friend with Marv or Goshi, yeah, sequel time. Um, there's we have a uh, speed. Um, oh god, oh god, this is too fast. You're killing me. So here's another example of them trying to dunk. But they're using um, what's that British sport with the bats, the weird bat things? Cricket, yeah, you use cricket bats to try and dunk. You have to pick up the puck on it, and then you have to dunk on your ground. As far as I know. <laughs> so we tried to do um, some sweet like flash games, Super Nintendo art, because that seems to be the thing. Everybody loves that 16 bit days. Um, and then that's what happens if you win, you get a big uh, clip art goal thing over the screen. It took us a while to, uh, to find. But if you want to play our game and, um, and support us on uh, Indiegogo, uh, we have it down in the MBIS room uh, for all of your enjoyment. So please come down. Bring a friend, though, to dunk on to humiliate them at the con. Don't wait and buy the game and do it at home. Do it in public, please. <laughs> uh, any questions? Oh, never mind. Too late. <laughs> In Cluster Buck, 99. This, this is an actual developer. <laughs> Alright, so I'm Brent, I'm Cluster Buck, 99. Um, so Cluster Buck is a kind of like soccer slash hockey slash pinball game where the object of the game is to score on the opponent's team. Uh, all up, there's about 25 different levels that all kind of vary in size, shape, with various obstacles. Uh, some have spikes, bumpers, and speed boosts that you have to navigate the level, uh, as well as other stuff. Um, so, right now, uh, we just released on Steam yesterday. So, that's cool. uh, if you want to swing by our booth, we have a 20% off coupon. You know, that's intense. Um, so yeah, so these are shots of all the different kind of levels. We have some levels that are a little bit more, um, I guess, competitive, where people need to strategize more, kind of like in basic soccer and stuff like that. But then if pe for people that aren't as comfortable with the game, we have the more complex levels, which kind of levels the playing field a little bit, so that like, people can die and there's kind of more challenges they get through for in some levels like these. Um, we also just finished a single player mode for the game, uh, which is kind of Smash style. You have to go through a linear storyline where you have to complete obstacles such as break the targets, obstacle courses, as well as unlock different shapes and stuff for customization. Uh, it's available for Mac, PC, and Linux, and we're working on some other stuff too. I was just told about this like 10 minutes ago, so I apologize. And uh, that's Cluster Puck. Yeah. Next up, the slide auto advances will be Combat Core. Thank you. 
Um, you can pause, there's a menu here, uh, in case you want to resume or, uh, or choose music. Because normally if you don't choose music first, there's no music, so you have to choose it. It's very important. Uh, as you can see, the person taking the last screenshot had very good timing, because the time at the bottom said 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So it's probably just really precision time in there. Uh, you can fire a big laser beam. It's like one weird texture that kind of looks like it's missing a little bit. That's pretty good. You can see there's lots of different names. I kind of feel like those are character names and not like the name that you choose yourself. I think you have lives. Anyway, the big thing is it's a four-player game mode. Huh? And if you like that sort of thing, it's kind of a power stone you like, was the thing we just decided on. Huh? It's pretty fun. I guess characters have stats. I don't actually know that. I think that's new. It's kind of new. When I last saw this, it was in uh, Baltimore's Gamescape. It was like, I don't know, it was eight months ago. Hey, it's Andre. You were there. How's it going? Did you play this too? Why didn't you stand up? You should be talking about this. You're really letting me down, Andre. There's lots of mics up here. Please, oh God, let the screenshot end. <laughs> Now we have coming down the aisle here to talk about Childhood Magic. Lots of different mechanics that you can play. 
Uh, we just released a couple days ago an iOS and Android, so you can pick that up. We actually reduced it to 99 cents this weekend for Mac OS. Um, we got some green lights, so that's also a good thing. Lots of other green lighters out here. Um, and so we, we're about to release on Steam in the next two weeks. So then we'll be like the other guys that are already on Steam. So, uh, this is our first game. It's just three or four of us building a game, messing around. Uh, soundtrack was done by Brenda Floss. Um, so it's a pretty epic soundtrack. You should check it out. Um, and then we have the arcade cabinet set up with the default Danny version set up. So anybody who's seen the Steam Train episode where he's playing, you can play as Danny if you just come on down and check it out. That's about it. Thanks, default Danny. Alright, next up, Dirt Bags Motor Club. Alright. Challenge board for MAGFest that's a 
basically everything we have in game right now that's uh, thrown at the player. A couple people have been here, really surprised. Um, so that's the first mission. Right now there's uh, also five uh, missions total. The last four missions are all uh, procedurally generated, uh, so it'll be unique content every time you play through. Um, so right now we're about halfway done with development. I need to add like Jamasa to the but uh, hopefully it'll be done in a couple months here. Um, still working through Greenlight right now. Uh, that's the big focus right now. I'm just trying to get on Steam so we could actually have people that, that know where it's being sold. Uh, right now it's available on itch.io if you're familiar with that. Uh, there's a free demo and uh, that's all. So appreciate it. Out on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android three months after that. 
Um, and it's, it's awesome, I think. I think it's cool. Uh, you can come downstairs and play it. We're giving out free t-shirts if you get over 75,000 water, which is the de facto currency in the most popular to drag in the future, where dragons take over the earth and humans are in space. Um, we have two characters. This is Sydney. She's beautiful and awesome. She's like 350 frames. It's over for me. Bye. <laughs> Next, it'll be horse. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Andre Shulgach. I am the core developer on this game. Uh, this is a game that I've been working on for the past two years or so, on and off. Uh, so it's basically, it's a survival weight based first person shooter that takes a lot of elements from older games like Duke Nukem and Quake and mixes it with a lot of familiar mechanics from games like Call of Duty and Halo and combines it to make a classic yet modern feeling FPS and it turned out pretty well. And the art style uh, during combat also displays that. So in game there's five different types of enemies. Uh, this is a little bit older picture too. Um, just about right before the event started, uh, uh, the night before, I just redid so much in the game, hoping it wouldn't break here. Um, it's crashed so much. But, uh, yeah, so it's completely free, so I'm not charging. Uh, it's off online right now, it's actually, you can download it for free, it's up on my website. And uh, you can check it out at my booth. And, yeah, um, it's kind of cool, there's a couple different weapons. There, actually, there's a whole bunch of different weapons. There's a sword named Sasha. Uh, there are uh, craftable weapons too, because the aliens sometimes they drop loot and you can collect them and then eventually craft your own weapons that uh, are basically researched by your space department up in the space. And yeah, it's been a lot, it's been a, a fun project. I'm uh, still a high school student and doubling college right now, so I'm trying to... <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, do this in my spare time and see where it goes. But... I'm looking forward to all the feedback I've been getting, and uh, yeah, it's, I think it's fun. I, I'm disqualified to answer that question, but it's up to you guys. Come check it out at the booth. So can't wait to um, hear what you guys have to say. About it. Yeah. Yeah, let's go check out a week for us. Thank you. Next up, exposure. Exposure in the house. Anyone want to speak about exposure? The game exposure? <laughs> Next up, extreme exorcism. I also found out about this 10 minutes ago, but 
I showed up, so that's what counts, right? Uh, this is the kitchen level, it has fire. There is a whole thing where people kept wanting to be able to walk over the lava, and I said they shouldn't, um, and people kept dying and getting annoyed. So the point of this game pretty much is that I'm okay at making games, but only when people tell me ideas that I disagree with. <laughs> I think that's it, right? Cool. Thank you. Yeah, come back to the next video. We'll love it. Or play, what should play all the games? Play at Steam Exorcism, and then play Red Shift Blue Shift, and then you decide. <laughs> It seems like a very good game, I'm sorry. Next up, Flamberge. Flamberge? I'll let them say the name of the game. Hi. I'm Michael. And I'm Ben. And we're the two man team for Flamberge. We're a high team. We have pixel art. So that's really original, right? So, uh, Flambridge is a tactics RPG. It borrows a lot from, like, uh, Fire Emblem. There's a lot of, like, party management. Um, except the main thing about Flambridge is that in the combat, you draft your moves for every character at once. And then you and the enemies move at the exact same time. So if you played a game like, uh, Frozen Synapse, it's, it's basically like that. So, in this, like, you're basically aiming their abilities, and then you hit execute and everything moves at once. Um, so downstairs we have two missions and a boss, as well as a tutorial. I recommend playing the tutorial. Um, it's kind of daunting. Um, back in November we were successfully greenlit and kickstarted, so uh, we've got that out of the way. Um, um, right now it's not available on Steam, but you can go to our website, hindseek.com, uh, just come visit us to see how it spells. <laughs> Hello. Um, so Michael didn't say, but he's in charge of programming and art, and this is all his concept. I am the composer and co-writer for the story. Um, I am also running a booth on the show floor where um, you can actually come and uh, and pre-order the game as if you were backing on our Kickstarter. So um, you can get access to our alpha builds. We have working alpha multiplayer that we're going to be consistently updating and uh, adding classes to. And you can also preview the, uh, the soundtrack at the booth. Um, we are doing an exclusive preview of the finale track, which we've just recorded with a live 19-piece string orchestra. Um, so that's super exciting. If you all want to check that out, just stop on by. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, hi. Yes! Uh, but, um, yeah, my, my booth is bright green and covered in inverted triforces. Come check us out. Thanks, Next up, Guns of Icarus. Going on because we do have 40 games. It's like if, if, if an indie did not make it here, I'll just talk to them later. All right, immune defense. Yeah. Hi, I'm Melanie Stegman. I'm the one person in molecular jig games. I'm a biochemist, and what I wanted to do was give you the chance to do biochemistry. Biochemists ask questions like, why is this neuron still dividing and killing this person? And now you can go in and find out uh, why cells do things. Biochemists ask questions by manipulating proteins, and you can manipulate proteins. But in order to make a game out of biochemistry, it took about two years of design. Jacob Clayman was here to witness and to help me. <laughs> we had a team of many designers who were in D.C. on a National Institutes of Health grant before I became a company. So what you needed was uh, a setup to let you explore an environment, and I went with the total retro uh, dashboard. Our microbot imagines it's a, a motorcycle, and it's projecting for you a retro dashboard. So it's not intimidating. It just, when you start from the science and develop up into a game, what happened was we ended up with a real-time strategy tower defense mashup. You can buy cells on the left. When you buy a cell, you can modify its receptors. The receptors are the proteins that determine what the cell can do and what it can bind to. You can activate cells using signals from other cells, so all of your towers that you buy communicate with each other, and um, your towers will die after they take enough damage. We've got um, 
three environments. This is a splinter where you start out. You can play it downstairs, our tutorial. We've also got um, brain in the long level to come. We are on Kickstarter right now. <laughs> and Sunday, we're 60% uh, funded. And this is a simple picture to end with to show you that with a new defense, you'll be able to um, do biochemistry on your own. Real-time strategy, tower defense mashup, on Kickstarter, till tomorrow.
Yeah, I don't know. It's been a blast. Like, it's been such an amazing learning experience. Like, uh, uh, and it brought us to Magfest, which was like a life goal of mine. So that's awesome. But yeah, you should come play it. You'll die a lot. It's beautiful. Neon Krieger Yamoto? Yamato? Really cool, as you can see, 
we have a new progression system, so the more you play, we have a couple difficulty modes. Um, I've never actually beat the game on anything but normal, so it's pretty challenging. Uh, come by, uh, if you want to try it out, win the game, we might throw you a Steam code, and uh, check us out. Thank you. Up next, Particle Mace. I don't know if the underscore is part of the name or that was just. Hello again. I gave a really good talk about Extreme Exorcism a moment ago. Uh, so this is my game, Particle Mace. Um, this is a solo project I've been working on for a while. And I know there's a lot of talk about twin stick shooters here, but I want you to like take a second and imagine what if it's just one stick? Just one stick, no shooting, that's it. Just no shooting, you fly around. Um, don't worry, you still kill stuff, it's still a video game. <laughs> uh, so if you fly your ship around, you got these particles behind you, and you want to smash them into things, and that's what you do, and then you have a great time. Uh, so this game, actually, I know there's a few games, and it's super exciting that this game came out yesterday, so it's on Steam and Humble and Itch. Uh, you should check those sites out and buy my game and then keep the lights on in my apartment. It's, it's a good thing for me. Uh, yeah, exactly. I like you clapped in, you guy. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, you should also especially check out itch.io if you don't know that site. The game's available there, and it's super, super good, and it's crazy dev-friendly, and the guy who runs it is awesome. So put your stuff up on that site. Uh, and then also, we have an arcade cabinet for this game. Uh, it, the Death by Audio arcade cabinet section, which is kind of by the stage and the airplane hangar that's like totally opposite where we are. Uh, there's a whole bunch of really cool games from New York that have custom cabinets over there, and you should go over and play all of them, but you should play mine more than you play the others. Uh, this guy, Mark Lee, built them all. He's around, you should talk to him if you want to build a cabinet for your game. He's awesome, and you can like have a really nice physical incarnation of the thing that you put all your time into doing, and it's very, very satisfying. Uh, so yeah, play Particle Mist. You swim particles around, you smash stuff. It's a really good time. You can buy it right now, as of yesterday and give me money, and I like that a lot, and I really thought that was the last slide, so I kind of was winding down, but it's a whole other slide here. You, it's got colors. <laughs> um, the background is the noise. I can tell you a lot about that algorithm. I like it. It's super good. And just about so long, 30 seconds. <laughs> it just changed. You get multiplayer, deathmatch. You'll beat me at it if you play me. There we go, Pixel Noir. Thank you, everybody. I guess you might cover me from uh, my earlier game, Flash Cup, that I talked about earlier. Uh, no, my name is Tim, uh, Tim Robinson. I work for Sword Tech Games. I'm the project manager. This uh, Glenn Stewart. He does the environments for Pixel Noir. Um, who's your like 16 bit RPGs? I read a few of you, good, oh, thank god. Um, Pixel Noir just came about because we loved those old 16 bit RPGs, we grew up with them, we immersed ourselves in them, and when we got into game development, we decided that that's what we wanted to make and what we wanted to share. So we came up with Pixel Noir based from a really simple idea of what if Earthbound was set in Sin City? And we wanted to have this sort of semi-humorous, uh, turn-based RPG, classic RPG, but with a, like a noir detective as the lead, and kind of run through a lot of those typical scenarios. Um, for the story of the game, we have a disgraced police detective who was framed uh, in an incident at Popa Hospital, thrown in jail for a decade, he suffers from terrible hallucinations, and at least that's what the doctors have been talking about, is that they're hallucinations. Getting out of the hospital, or getting out of the uh, prison, he starts a private eye uh, agency, and gets roped into a case that seems to deal with the things he's been seeing in his hallucinations over the years. And then gets forced to delve into all the horrible things that have been going on in the city over the ten years he's been gone. Uh, Gameplay-wise, we've been uh, basically going in as crazy as we can with new ideas and trying to combine a lot of things. We have time hits from things like uh, Mario RPG. Uh, we have a really, we have different bosses that show up that have different mechanics and we have to figure out how to defeat them. Um, this here was a, an old concept image of a lighting system that we have. We have, it's an old 16-bit RPG, but we have a full dynamic lighting system for it. <laughs> Thanks.
Grazie. 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 Hey, I'm Eric. I am one third of C 
Secret Crush Corporation, which is a team of indie game developers out of New York City. So, <laughs> Secret Crush is me, Aaron, and Tony Pizza, and Diego Garcia. And so this is our game, Sunburn. So Sunburn, imagine you are the captain of the ship, and that's you on that planet over there. You have a ship, or you did have a ship. You had a ship until it was destroyed by a comet. And now you're stranded in space, all alone. And you have no way home. But you still have your crew, you still have your friends. So you decide to get together and all jump into the sun. So at least at the end, you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, so Sunburn is a slightly depressing but extremely cute um, twist on the planet popping genre of games where you're floating through space using your jetpack and using um, the obstacles to get into the sun. We also have a cat astronaut named Pork Bun and a dog astronaut named Moose Tracks, and they are totally adorable. And you can get the game on the App Store right now. It is a $2.99. We're releasing in November. We're also going to be releasing in the uh, Android for Android pretty soon we're doing this spring, I don't have I don't know what time for that, but it'll be soon. And yeah, I mean who doesn't like jumping to the sun and burning to death, but at least you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's about it for suffered. Um, other than that, we are we're part of the NYU game scene uh, NYU game team team out of the game center. We are working with the NYU Game Center, the Game Innovation Lab, so if you want to know more about games in higher education. Talk about something. Guys, check out Sunburn. <laughs> okay, Super Galaxy Squadron. We're near, near the end here, we're on the S's. And as we've pretty much been going in alphabetical order, so coming up. But we have a few S names. They're an almost alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Hello. I am Nick Linkskills. I am one month, 100% of Psyche Studios. Oh, that's where I should be, which isn't a real company. Um, I'm guessing a lot of us here have played schmucks, judging by the evidence. How many of you guys are really bad at schmucks? I tried to make something for us, <laughs> and I might have gone too far, but either way, Super Galaxy Squadron is a shmup that might be less difficult than most shmups. There are 14 ships you can choose from, all of them have unique stats and weapons. Uh, there's an arcade mode with six levels, and a bunch of bosses, those are five of them, and an endless mode that's procedurally generated and it has escalating difficulty, so you'll get overwhelmed after like 20 minutes and probably just die. Uh, there's pixel art, because that's what I do for a living. So if any of you guys need pixel art, I could use some money. Because, well first of all, Super Galaxy Squadron came out on Steam yesterday. Uh, it's on sale for six something dollars. I didn't make the sale because I've been here. But all proceeds from the game, now and forever, will go to Child's Play Charity because apparently I can't get enough of being poor. <laughs> um, soundtrack was done by Random Encounter, who I think have played here before. I'm sure some of you have seen them before, but they're not here this year. I wish they were. And uh, I guess that's about it. I mean, it's a schmuck. You shoot things with bullets and a lot of other stuff. You got bullets and missiles, a bunch of different kinds of missiles. And uh, you'll probably die a lot. I tried to cut down on that, but it's just so much fun. Glass bosses just shoot so many bullets, and it just gets out of control. But I can't help it. If you try it, you'll see. Just trust me. Thank you. I'll throw a seed to go to Child's Play, that's awesome. Okay, up next, Star Seed. Hello everyone, how's it going? 
one doing? Yay! So I was really hoping to pick, but I was going to be skipped because I didn't talk about my game. Um, this is Star Saber! Uh, we totally did not uh, steal a bunch of mechanics from Knuckles Chaotics. Um, everyone's played that on the 32X? No, of course not. I, I actually never played it either until we made this game and everyone came to cons and said, we ripped off Knuckles Chaotics because we got two characters that are chained to each other. So what you're looking at there is Squidly and the Prince of the Galaxy, Squishy. Uh, Squishy can take on a bunch of different forms and buy uh, new cakes, uh, smash through things, uh, eat keys, traverse the world, beat enemies, spits them back out. But what's cool is you got the two characters that are chained together, and they act as kind of a physics chain between them. You can eat things and like swing around off the, uh, different obstacles. It's a Metroidvania style because everyone was making those at some point and we decided it was a good idea. And it wasn't because we spent way too long making it. Um, but it is, uh, it's fun. It's about physics. Um, you can do physics and things. Uh, we are down on the show floor, of course. It's out on the iPad and iPhone right now. Uh, it's free, so I should be seeing a lot of people downloading it on the phone right now. Everyone? Anyone? Okay. Um, is there anything else I need to say about this? Does everyone know what the game is? How long is it? About 10 hours long. Uh, it's got three different worlds, it's got about 24 levels. Uh, it doesn't show really well at times because, you know, people come and play for 10 minutes and they're like, this is way too hard, but it's like two and a half hours into the game. Uh, but, yeah, we got good reaction. I think you'll have fun with it. Uh, so, how much time do we have left? Yeah, like 10 seconds. Like 10 seconds. Come play Star Saver, download it right now. iPhone. Or Pixel, I'm Pixel, please. Kind of, the program. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to stick with the star theme here. You can never have too many stars. Next up, Star Versus. It's our stealth multiplayer party game. So think of Spy Party, or those games where 
it's flat party, you're looking for an opponent while they're hiding and you're trying to shoot them, and we combine those into a game uh, about stabbing your friends. So as you can see, you have that purple thief who's dead right there, so each thief has their own color, but once you start the game, you all look exactly the same, and you have these other computer thieves hanging around. So the goal of the game is to figure out who you are, figure out who your opponents are, and then stab them in the back. We have a number of game modes, so Thief Town is the normal mode where you stab your friends, we have Spy Town, which has a bunch of items, and then we have Drunk Town, in which one player plays the Sheriff, and all the other thieves have to disguise themselves as drunks so they can't stab, and then you try to shoot the other drunk thieves. Uh, and we're actually showing off a new game mode, uh, it's called Spooky Town, so we have a spooky castle, uh, we have a new item, and we have these different showdowns, so lightning will be flashing, you have to dodge them, uh, and stab your friends, always, it's the main mechanic. Uh, as you can see, we have guns and other items. So, Thief Town is actually available right now on Steam, and uh, we have a companion app on iOS and Android. Uh, come down and play, it's a lot of fun. It's got a banging soundtrack by Absurdus, uh, Game Chops, and other music, video game music labels. And, um, yeah, basically, uh, it's four bucks on Steam, very cheap. Uh, play it over local area network, uh, play it on one computer with four controllers, play it on four computers with your own keyboards, or use your phones as an app. So, as you can see, Forget about Mario Sunshine. It's a good game. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, a sidewalk on the dance threshold. Traces. 
and you have the ability to slow down time, and each level is essentially a puzzle. You have portals, you have obstacles, you can crash, you lose a bunch of fuel, and there are 12 worlds that you get to unlock. Each world is six levels apiece. There's a small storyline that you can pay attention to or not. There's also an endless mode, which is a endurance type. Um, run through and see as long as you can go. You avoid the obstacles. And uh, it's got uh, local leaderboards. We also built an uh, arcade cabinet for a display here, which is down on the floor. We uh, launched just this uh, last August, last year, on Steam and Azure. It's available for um, all three of the uh, major uh, platforms as far as OS. And uh, come check it out. It's really fun, especially in the arcade cabinet. It also has a soundtrack that's done by Flexstyle. He's an uh, OC remix artist. Actually performed here uh, last year at Manifest. And that's about it. So come see us on the floor. Up next, Tumbleweed Express.
Yeah, uh, our game is cooperative multiplayer. You can play with up to four players. It's only local co-op right now, but we do want to add online co-op. Um, this is another screenshot of a rogue shooting a man-eating plant. Um, it's a pretty simple game. You can pick it up for play. You can jump, you can shoot. It's just jumping and shooting. And I don't have that much more to say about it. Oh, uh, we don't have a great sound system set up, but the music by Sandy Bush is actually really good. So if you guys ever want to try out the free demo we have, it is um, worth downloading and listening to. That's it. And then the last three. So, uh, and I thank everyone so far for running through this. Right now we got Vidar coming up. Vidar or Vidar? Vidar. Hello. All right. Um, I'm Dean. I'm the developer for Vidar. Uh, it is an RPG puzzle where everyone dies. And the only game in the indie show is the pixel art, so you should really check it out because it's really new and, you know, it's got this retro thing going. Um, it, so the game takes place in a town with, uh, it, it's kind of, it's on the brink. Uh, there's like 24 people that are still left alive in this town. And every night, uh, one of them is killed by this beast that comes out of its lair. Uh, all of these people have, these NPCs have their own personalities, their own quests to give you, uh, their own branching story arcs, and also, critically, their own relationships with each other. Uh, a lot of Vidar's residents are friends, or family, or loved ones, or neighbors. Uh, when one person dies, it has an impact on everyone else's story that's in the game. So everyone else's plot lines go careening in a bunch of different directions because they lost a son or they lost uh, uh, an assistant to record or something like that. Because the order of deaths is random in each game, the story that actually gets told is different every time you play it. Uh, and that's, that's kind of the, the, the focus, the driving force behind this. Um, the goal of the game is to stop the beast uh, before everyone in town is dead, and to do that you uh, explore the beast slayer, which is filled with kind of environmental dungeon puzzles. It's basically Zelda without the combat, uh, where you're trying to get from point A to point B. And to make sure that you can uh, still have a challenge if you want to see a new story evolve in Vidar, uh, the puzzles are also randomly done, so that way you, you, know, you can't just like breeze through it the, the second time you come back for a different plot. Uh, and in the MagFest demo, we uh, are dropping the player off in the middle of the game. We kill off three people right off the top of the, back, uh, of the demo. So when you come and play the demo downstairs, play it a few times because it's going to be different every time you play the demo or whoever's next to you is going to be playing it. Uh, we are on Kickstarter as well. Uh, we're midway through our campaign. Um, and for anyone who backs us during the festival, we've got uh, soundtracks uh, of the entire game to give away downstairs. The soundtrack is awesome. It's very cheap orchestra inspired. Uh, so come back us and uh, Pick up some, pick the sound. Thanks so much, guys. Our penultimate indie here is for Whispering Willows. Hello, everyone. My name is David Logan. I'm with Nightlight Interactive, and we developed Whispering Willows. In Whispering Willows, you play as kind of an angsty 13 year old girl who is stubborn and her father has gone missing. And so you're going, everyone thinks he's dead and they even hold a funeral for him, but you don't give up. And so you go to the place where he worked, kind of this old mansion. Uh, he was the groundskeeper there. And uh, you just quickly discover that there is a very strong spiritual presence there. Um, Elena has this amulet that was passed down in her family line and it actually allows her to actual project her spirit. And so that's the main mechanic that we're working with here. Um, you can switch between kind of her human form and then her astral projection. And as uh, each form, you can kind of do slightly different things as the astral projection. You can see and talk to ghosts, you can fly around, you can possess objects. Um, and so you'll, you'll be switching between these forms to kind of progress the most of the game. It is a very story-driven, uh, adventure game with some horror aspects, some puzzle aspects. Uh, the game, we started on Kickstarter a couple years ago. Uh, we got funded. We're on Steam right now. We're going to be on PlayStation Vita 3, 4. Uh, we're on Ouya. We're going to be on Android, iOS, Nvidia Shield, everything. Um, the game was 
done by a team of about 30 people actually. They'd all volunteered in their free time uh, after work each day. And so it was definitely uh, a passion project to complete this. Uh, we're really pleased with that we finally got it done and finished and uh, it's done fairly well. Also, I'd like to say please back Star Mazer on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Last and not least, Zarbot. Baby Luis knows Zarbot. Okay, so um, that's the uh, that's the indie showcase. You guys have heard about the games. If you haven't already played them, go down to the mid section, check them out. One last reminder: if you see this hat, it was taken from a booth last night. Someone had a little too much fun. So if you see the hat, tell them to return it because it's not theirs. Um, yeah, hope to see you down at the showcase floor. Thanks, everyone.